Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 25 for the year 2020, appointing the following as General Directors at the Ministry of Interior. Brigadier Isa Hassan Mohammed Al Gattan as General Director of the Northern Government Police D Directorate. Brigadier Jabir Mohammed Al Joyed Al Khaldi as General Director of Guards. And Brigadier Ibrahim Saif Bhit Al Najran as General Director of the Capital Government Police Directorate. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 26 for the year 2020, appointing the following as Deputy Governors for a period of four years. Brigadier Abdullah Khalifa Abdullah Al Jiran as Deputy Muharraq Governor. Brigadier Khalid Rabia Hamad Al Sinan as Deputy Northern Governor. And Brigadier Isa Thamar Abdullah Al Dosri as Deputy Southern Governor. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received at Rafa'a Palace Deputy Prime Minister His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa in the presence of His Highness Sheikh Ibrahim bin Hamad Al Khalifa where His Royal Highness followed up on the progress of work in various government sectors and the services provided to citizens to meet their needs and aspirations. His Royal Highness affirmed that the main purpose of development efforts is to benefit the Bahraini citizen and that the current challenges resulting from the coronavirus require more awareness and cooperation to maintain the country's development gains. The Prime Minister stressed that the awareness of citizens and residents is key to the success of all efforts exerted by various sectors to overcome this challenge, adding that adhering to precautionary instructions and guidelines is a national duty to protect the safety and health of society and mitigate the spread of the virus. He hailed the positive result achieved by the kingdom in facing this pandemic, presenting to the world with a model in awareness, solidarity and speed of response to the challenge it imposed in a way that reflects its readiness, efficiency and distinction of its citizens in various fields. His Royal Highness expressed appreciation to the great sacrifices of the medical and nursing caters and government authorities and volunteers. He pointed out that the government is working to maintain the stability of the living conditions of citizens and meet their needs including the provision of a sufficient stock of food supply and basic commodities and stress the importance of preparing for the requirements of the future. His Royal Highness also discussed regional and international affairs, especially with regard to the economic effects of the coronavirus at the global level and the importance of international community efforts to overcome this crisis with minimal losses at all levels. The Ministry of Health stressed the importance of following all official health guidelines and social distancing measures intended to mitigate the spread of the coronavirus COVID-19 during the holy month of Ramadan. The Ministry announced that it has registered 16 active cases of the virus among a single Bahraini family, including parents, siblings and infants who are exposed to the virus by one of their family members, case number 2930, under the contact tracing mechanism. The ministry underlined that the family members was, were experiencing COVID-19 symptoms and had not called the designated hotline number 444 or self-isolated. Furthermore, the individual failed to comply with government-issued social distancing measures, which included limiting social gatherings during iftar and wearing masks while out in public. It underscored that strictly adhering to official social distancing guidelines is the responsibility of every individual, and doing so helps to safeguard the wider community. Furthermore, the ministry noted that it has increased its test capacity to ensure the early detection and treatment of active cases. The ministry emphasized that the virus is still in its transmission phase globally, adding that there is currently no cure or vaccination for the illness. In this regard, the ministry noted that while the kingdom's treatment protocol has been highly successful in mitigating the effects of the virus, halting community transmission is the most effective means to safeguard public health. It stressed the adoption of a prevention is better than cure approach, underlining the importance of following all COVID-19 precautionary guidelines issued by the government. 
The Ministry of Health announced that the number of coronavirus cases reached 2,783, with 10 recovered and 82 registered new cases. The Ministry of Health urges everyone to adhere to the rules and affirm the importance of following instructions, such as washing one's hands with soap on a regular basis, along with avoiding shaking hands and close contact. Moreover, covering the nose and the mouth when sneezing and avoiding public spaces when possible. Since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic, Bahrain has witnessed an unprecedented number of volunteers who continue to help authorities mitigate the spread of the virus across the kingdom. As a recently graduated pharmacy student from the University of Bahrain, I felt like it was my duty to serve my country and as a citizen as well, especially during these hard times. It hurts to see my country go through such difficult times without doing anything about it. Uh, I aimed to use the knowledge I learned in the past, these past, uh, my bachelor's program to help serve the country and do all I can to provide the best care possible and aim for zero corona. I joined here because it was the country's need and this is what we are trained for all these years. We work hard for the patients and this is our oath as well. So as our country called us that we need all the volunteers, all the doctors, everybody in the field to help our country in the time of need, we were there. And we never hesitated because maybe this is what we have been already been prepared for all these years. So it felt I wouldn't say normal, but it didn't feel that hard. Like people usually ask, you know, do you, are you scared you're going to see the corona patients? It never felt scared to us. They were all our patients as usual. So it was, it was a great experience, I would say. In our international news, coronavirus restrictions have been eased in some Medina neighborhoods in Saudi Arabia to allow residents to leave their homes between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. The move follows a recommendation by health authorities for curbs to ease in some areas of Medina. An interior ministry spokesman said that the public response to the remaining restrictions would be monitored and evaluated by health authorities and urged people to abide by these measures to ensure public safety. The number of people in the kingdom recovering from the disease has exceeded 10,000 recorded cases. Most had mild symptoms and the recovery time ranged from 14 to 21 days. The Ministry of Health spokesman Dr. Mohammed Al Abdul Ali said that 80 to 90 percent of confirmed cases recovered within a time frame of two to three weeks. As part of the humanitarian and relief aid provided by Saudi Arabia to the people of Yemen, a number of initiatives have been launched by the King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center, KS Relief, in coordination with the World Health Organization. The polymerase chain reaction and unit at the National Center for Central Public Health Laboratories in Siun in Hadramaut province had been inaugurated to help expedite mass testing and diagnosis of the coronavirus disease negating the need to send samples outside the province. The director of the center, Dr. Nabil Baybad, said that the unit included four main rooms fully equipped with qualified laboratory staff and that it would continue financing the emergency response project for hygiene and environmental sanitation across the directorates of Aden in cooperation with the Ayadan Biyad Association. Oman's health ministry confirmed 175 new coronavirus cases over the past 24 hours, raising the total to 3,399 in the Sultanate today. The ministry also recorded new recoveries, raising the total to 1,117, while a total of 17 coronavirus-related deaths have been recorded so far. Of the new confirmed cases, 52 are Omani nationals and 123 are non-Omanis. The first two coronavirus cases in Oman were announced on the 24th of February after two Omani women were infected during a trip to Iran. Since then, the government has imposed strict measures to prevent the virus from spreading further. The lockdown in the capital, Masqat, was extended until the end of May and Ramadan mass gatherings were banned. Here's Bara Abdullah with the latest business news. Thank you, Sarah.
Good evening and welcome to the business news on Bahrain International. I'm Bara Abdallah and starting with the UAE as the Emirates Airlines reported a 21% rise in full year profit today but warned the outbreak of the new coronavirus will hit its performance in the fourth quarter of the financial year. The Dubai state carrier made 287.5 million US dollars in the 12 months to March 31st compared to 237.3 million US dollars a year earlier. Revenue contracted 6.1% to 25 billion US dollars as the number of passengers carried fell 4.2% to 56.2 million. At the foot of the Acropolis Hill in the touristic Kukaki district, the coronavirus lockdown has silenced the sound of Airbnb customers' wheeled luggage. The tourist industry in Athens, as in many other European capitals, has ground to a halt with planes grounded and restaurants, museums and archaeological monuments all closed. This has left a huge hole in the Greek economy, which had been recovering from a decade of crisis. Owners of small apartments in Kukaki, who had been renting them on the Airbnb platform in order to provide income during the financial crisis, are once again struggling. And moving on to the United Kingdom, where the British Housing Minister Robert Jenrick said today, ahead of a televised address from the Prime Minister to set up plans to begin easing the coronavirus lockdown measures, that the government wants to slowly and cautiously restart the economy. Jenrick said the easing of the lockdown would be conditional and keeping the spread of the coronavirus under control. And if the rate of infection begins to increase in some areas, more stringent measures could be reintroduced. Tesla Corporation sued uh, local authorities in California yesterday as the electric car maker pushed to reopen its factory there. And Chief Executive Elon Musk threatened to move Tesla's headquarters uh, and future programs from the state to Texas or Nevada. Musk uh, had been pushing to reopen Tesla's Vermont, California factory after Alameda County's health department said the car maker must not reopen because of local lockdown measures to curb the spread of the coronavirus remains in effect. And that's all for the business news for this evening. And it's back to you, Sarah. Thank you, Barak. Volunteers across the UK are signing up to help the vulnerable people that are self-isolating. Several initiatives have sprung up since the new coronavirus outbreak, in particular to help shield the elderly. Help the Elderly is one of many community initiatives that have sprung up in the UK to support people self-isolating during the COVID-19 pandemic. People needing help can book a delivery via the Help the Elderly website. They are then matched up to a volunteer in their area and can contact them directly. The volunteer then delivers the goods, maintaining physical distancing at the drop-off.